To support spiritual growth and planetary survival, Rabbi Gabriel Cousins, MD, and Reverend Michael Beckwith, PhD, co-hosted the Juice Fast for Peace at Reverend Beckwith's Agape International Spiritual Center in Culver City, California, USA during the first week of March 2009. The event was organized to help participants end their addiction to meat and other animal products in order to support their own personal and spiritual growth while also acting to ensure planetary survival by reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases from the animal industry. On March 7, 2009, Supreme Master Ching Hai accepted the invitation to attend via video conference to answer the participants' questions and concerns about the damaging impact the meat diet has on the environment and human health. Born from a deep concern for the future of the planet, Dr. Cousins, a vegan, began his Juice Fast for Peace series partnering with Reverend Beckwith in Culver City with plans to offer them across the United States and the world to help people end their addiction to meat. According to Dr. Cousins, by consuming green juices during the fast, people lose the cellular memory of addictive flesh foods, dairy and eggs, thus making it easier to transition to a plant-based diet. He is both a general medical practitioner and a psychiatrist who developed early in his career a fascination for understanding how the mind affects the body and how the body and the food we feed it affects the mind. He was the chief mental health consultant for the Sonoma County Head Start in California and a consultant on the California State Department of Health. He is a holistic medical doctor who incorporates homeopathy, live food nutrition, Ayurveda, naturopathy, acupuncture as part of his healing modality. Another core aspect of his approach to wellness and healing is a recognition that our purpose in life is to awaken to the divine. For the next several decades, he devoted his research to finding out how all body types could create a healthy balance and obtain all proper nutrition on a living foods diet. He has authored many books summarizing his findings over the years, such as Depression Free for Life and There is a Cure for Diabetes. For over 20 years, Dr. Cousins has been leading and perfecting green juice fasts, in which only juices made predominantly from green vegetables are consumed. His goal is to help people become cured of supposedly incurable diseases, such as diabetes and drug and alcohol addiction, while also helping us clear our thoughts and reflect upon our true nature as the children of God. Reverend Michael Beckwith, a vegan, has stated that our purpose on the planet is to wrap our consciousness around the divine treasure within us. He uplifted the fasting participants with daily inspirational talks. He is one of the featured teachers in the international best-selling book and movie, The Secret. His spiritual journey began in the 1970s where his exploration of Eastern and Western teachings led to his own style of teaching referred to as the New Thought Ancient Wisdom Spiritual Tradition. It was his vision of a non-denominational spiritual community that led to the founding of the Agape International Spiritual Center in 1986, which seeks to bring all people together into one human family unified in a core value of peace and the spiritual origin of all beings. Each week, around 9,000 people come to hear him speak at the Agape Center. He proactively works alongside other global peacemakers, including the Dalai Lama, and has also been featured on Oprah, an international U.S.-based daytime talk show, and interviewed on Larry King Live by one of the premier broadcast interviewers of our time. We invite you now to join for part four of our four-part series witnessing this peaceful and uplifting dialogue between Supreme Master Ching Hai, Reverend Michael Beckwith, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, and the participants of the first Juice Fast for Peace in Culver City, California on March 7, 2009. This is my wife that's about to say something. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, thank you so much. You've really touched my heart. Thank you for the best half. Thank you so much. So uh, my question is this. Um, 
It's a very simple question, but it's kind of hard for me. So I might get a little teary. And I, maybe because I've been fasting, so I'm, you know, I'm close to my... In the cell. What, what's inside, you know? Uh-huh. This has to do with my mother. It's good to cry. It's good to cry. It's cleansing. Yes. yes. It's, a, it's a celebration, though. Yes. So it's yes. a celebration. So my mother is 83 years alive. And she's a beautiful person. And she came to live with us about three years ago. And she's a very strong woman, beautiful soul. And when she came to live with us, she was a big woman. She wore size 18 clothes. Yes. And she walked into our home, and, and, and we have a, a meatless home. We didn't eat meat in our home. Oh. And she couldn't stop eating meat, but she ate it less. Understand. So now she's like size 8. Oh. You know, she's size 8, and she's really... Ten size now? Yeah, she's really thin in her body, and she's very feisty and strong. And she eats meat very little. Yeah, My question is this. What can I say to her? Because we, we've had a lot of conversations about not killing the animals, about Understand. the result of our lifestyle and its impact on the planet. What do you say to an older person who's been around a long time and who believes that they need just a little meat every now and then just to keep their protein thing together, you know, she's been living a long time. And so she considers, and she says, I just want it every now and then, just a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm thinking like, no, and I don't want to be disrespectful. She loves us. She cleans, she irons, she, she does everything to help us. Yes. What can we say to our families who've been around, who really feel like they need just a little fish, just a little bit of chicken? to maintain a certain modicum of health. She does the beans and the rice, and she's getting there, you know. But maybe you're such a great teacher. I know you can tell me something. <laughs> and then we can have a look at this on television. Thank you. She's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's difficult to tell your mother what to do because she used to tell you what to do. Yes. I am lucky because I didn't have to tell my parents anything. They automatically know what I'm doing and they just volunteer and they just did it, you know? All by themselves, quit smoking even. I think we just don't buy meat. Yes, if that helps. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus, blue tongue disease, E. coli, Salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease, or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk, pigs disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer-related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy. Cause world hunger and wars. 80% cause of global warming. Plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. 
Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance. Plus more. Some of the tragic tolls of tobacco. 5.4 million smoking-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of smoking-related illnesses, 96 billion US dollars in the United States alone. Speeds the aging process. Toxic residues of third hand smoke. Heart disease. Coronary thrombosis. Cerebral thrombosis. Kidney failure. Cancer. Lung cancer. Esophagus cancer. Kidneys cancer. Bladder cancer. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Emphysema, bronchitis. Stroke. Impotence. Additional harms for second-hand smoking. Sudden infant death syndrome. Infertility, miscarriages and premature deliveries. Childhood asthma, bronchitis, ear infection. Cleft lip or palate. Hyperactivity and aggression in asthmatic boys. Circulatory problems in women. Plus more. You can uh, give her the information to read herself without telling her. Just uh, let it, uh, you know, laying around like carelessly and maybe she pick him up and read it. And then if she thinks she decides it herself, maybe she feel more uh, self-respected, you know, and not lose face, you know, to the young <laughs> generation who knows better. And she knows that, but she doesn't want to accept. You see, you have to know she lives all her life until 80. She knows a lot of things. And even though she knows it's not right, but you are a daughter, you understand? That's why I never told my parents or my relatives anything. And then it works by itself. <laughs> okay, there's one more thing. You can print all the information. Don't have to be like a Supreme Master Television or my name, nothing. Just print the info from our SupremeMasterTV.com. Without title, without where from, nothing. Just scientific fact that we collected there for you. Or if she wants to watch the Supreme Master television now again, you can show her because every Tuesday we have a stop cruelty show and it shows terrible fate of the chickens. I'm sure if she's seen that, her compassion, because she just saw a piece of meat in the supermarket, she cannot relate to the suffering of the animals. But if you show her this, because uh, you can download them all free of charge, you know. We had many shows already back, so you can download many and... Just now and again, you let it run and you go kitchen, do something else, and then maybe she watch it or you just leave it there, she watch it. You download it and you put it on the disc or something, and then you say you want to watch it, you know, because you missed it or something. And then all this uh, very cruel, very inhumane treatment to chicken, little chicken, you know, they hang them in their wing and they clip their beaks and they're bleeding and they, uh, you know... <laughs> Uh, shaking on the floor and all that, and all the animals as well. It's not just the killing even, it's the cruelty treatment that she will not be able to bear it. And then maybe that will awaken her compassion, her mother instinct, you know? And that properly helps, yes? It's very difficult for a daughter, even a priestly daughter, to tell her mother what to do. We have a saying in Vietnam, say, the Buddha at home doesn't respond. <laughs> so that... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so they have to go to the temple to pray to the Buddha there. The same statues, but they go to the temple instead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you and your other best half, uh, you know, looking in the same direction because it's true love and it's very nourishing and very supporting. Many husband and wife could not even agree on this meat diet stuff, not to talk about the same belief or anything or doing the same direction. Love is looking the same direction. I'm so glad for you. At least you and your best half is well. And that's very important. You see? Yeah, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, God. Thank you. Beautiful.
vegetarianism in religion. The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Gaudai The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius Essenes I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve Hinduism Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adilila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been especially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Kritanga Judaism And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible Blood meaning flesh Sikhism those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib Taoism Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way Tibetan Buddhism the offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health, and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature. And then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did. And they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. You've answered all the questions. Good. They're all enlightened. They don't need much. <laughs> After one week of drinking. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're very grateful for your wisdom. And again, bless you, bless everyone here that we continue to inspire people to be vegan. Thank you. Save themselves and save the planet. That's good. That's Amen. Good. Thank Amen. you so much. Yes. Have a good time still. <laughs> we really appreciate uh, your take on the, the critical moment that we're in and how we passed a critical point. Ah, we do it and now together. This can be amplified yeah. through the wonderful work that we're doing. Thank you for, for being here with us today. Yes, we're doing it together. You know, even though you have been telling them the same thing over the week or many other times, but uh, good food we can eat again and again, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Okay, guys. Remember, you are God like. Peace and blessings. Yes. Blessings. Yes, God bless us. Remember, you are God. Also, bless us, okay? Bless yes. the planet. Yes. Bless the planet with your power. Yes? Ciao. 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 Love. A lot of love. Yeah. You beautiful people. Beautiful people. Thanks for having me. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, reverend. Thank you, uh, the other reverend. <laughs> <laughs> love you all. My God. Beautiful. Thank you. It's my joy to participate in this wonderful dialogue that we had with the Supreme Master. Very sweet and very powerful. Yeah, I've been vegan for many, many years. Oh. Um, we've invited uh, my staff this week and many people at Agape to participate in this week-long juice fast to assist them in the, in the transition from uh, a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet. Cleanse their emotional body and their mental body so they can be more receptive to the spiritual intelligence but also to be a participant in um, serving the emerging paradigm on this planet. It, it, it is so necessary at this time since we're at this critical point in, in human history with the methane uh, leaking into the atmosphere. So we've invited our community to participate. Well, I just met with my uh, COO of my organization here, and he's uh, said he's through with the whole meat industry and that he's going to remain vegan for the rest of his life. He's just one person. And so many other are, are becoming inspired, inspired as well. In the beginning, I gave up meat primarily for the spiritual uh, reasons. I could feel and see the different entities in the food. I could see the fear and the anger uh, of the animals in the food. And I knew that those vibrations were going into my body temple. So, so my initial movement to being a vegetarian and then a vegan had more to do with uh, the spiritual consciousness. As I studied and the years went on, I discovered that it was more healthy for you as well. And then later on discovered the terrible things we were doing to the planet through the meat industry. So it came in stages like that, Sp spiritual, then health, and then uh, the planet. This is Michael Bernard Beckwith at the Agape International Spiritual Center. We want you to be veg, go green, and save the planet. You have the power to do so. You have the power of your fork and your mind and your intention. Be veg, go green, and save the planet. Peace and blessings to you. I think she's such an inspiration and she's got such a great sense of humor too and she knows her facts, she really knows uh, everything. Um, I'm really uh, inspired just by her genuineness. She's got an absolute incredible message and we, we uh, totally uh, inspire that way of life. Uh, but just to, to hear it, she's very uplifting and definitely there for all the people, all the animals. She's great. I really appreciate Mr. Qinghai on a lot of levels. First of all, her open-heartedness and her strong, strong commitment to saving the planet and saving the humans on the planet and the animals on the planet. That's really, really comes through very powerfully and we very much appreciate that because that's what we're doing. And the synergy is uh, wonderful to behold. I very appreciate the fact that we can get our, our message of being vegan and going green, and let's say going green diet, not just green ecology, but green diet, your inner ecology, out to the whole planet through Supreme Master Ching Hai's incredible TV network. And so we're really just really pleased. I mean, it was really good. I felt she was dynamic, real, open, and really we had a good time with her. Be veg, go, go green, green, and, and save, save the, the planet! planet. <laughs>
It was fabulous. I was delightfully surprised. It's just so amazing to see that so many people on the planet right now are really tuning in to this, what needs to happen, and that it's such a huge movement. And her authenticity and spontaneity, it was just an education of it. I've heard the talk afterwards. There, there were vegan bo vegans born in the tent today. Literally people changed and just said, I cannot eat meat anymore. So it's very exciting. Hello, Supreme Master Shanghai. Thank you so much for your work. And everyone, we can be veg, go green, and save the planet. I thought today's event was magnificent. Her, her humor, her kindness, her generosity of thought, her wisdom. I love the way that she combined both the statistics about what the outer world is about and the differences we can make in the, in the physical world and then linked it deeply and thoroughly with the interior life. She combined both worlds and made us one. Be vegan. <laughs> Save the planet. Yay! <laughs> I was obviously very, very inspired by the beautiful way of the Supreme Master. Thank you so very much. You are just magnificent. Just being yourself and the way God made you and just being brilliant and letting your light shine through all that you're doing and all that you're being and, and glowing. You have to be that person. That's who you have to be in order to, to be it so well. So thank you for, for doing that and being that. I'm going to make a declaration. I'm going to go really, really vegan and not even eat those good old cookies that might have a little egg in it. Thank you so much. Um, I think the most powerful thing I heard today was just how she really stressed the interconnectedness of all of life and how every individual has the opportunity to make a difference just by, by what they eat and by what they do each and every day. So if every person looks at it from that perspective, then the change is made, even if it's just one person at a time. And I think that was a really powerful message. So thank you. We're really happy to be here. This is the first uh, of the Juice Feast uh, we're traveling across the country. We're organic vegan live food chefs. Um, we do a lot of work at the Tree of Life Cafe in Patagonia, Arizona um, with uh, Dr. Gabriel Cousins. This Juice Feast here is really kind of setting the sort of tone for um, bringing people onto a vegan diet. What we're looking at is reducing the methane, uh, reducing global warming. So we're really happy to be here and to be sharing with people and um, inspiring people. We're both teachers and chefs, so um, we have programs at the tree for um, conscious eating, learning how to prepare organic vegan live foods. Uh, we have a, a conscious eating program that runs pretty much every month uh, throughout the year. I've been doing um, organic vegan live foods for about 11 years now. You know, I transitioned from a, a standard American diet. I'm 30 years old now. At 16, uh, I went vegetarian uh, and, um, you know, slowly transitioned from vegetarian diet to a vegan diet to a live foods diet. So I think the key for, um, for people is to see that it can be a slow transition. It can be a fast transition. It's really kind of tuning into your heart and feeling what feels comfortable for you and opening your heart to... Um, these, these ideas and this change uh, that can occur on all levels, spiritually, mentally, physically, uh, and globally, uh, planetary uh, with the environment. Um, so this is a, a really excellent uh, vibration that we're, we're holding here. It was really beautiful uh, to have Supreme Master Ching Hai and Gabriel and Reverend Michael Beckwith together. It was a really powerful team of uh, just energy happening. And um, Gabriel's traveling and sharing, um, you know, exactly the same message as Supreme Master Ching Hai and, you know, the sense of going vegan, going plant source only diet, uh, reducing the methane on the planet by simply going vegan. And, you know, Gabriel's sharing this statement really, really strongly. What we're looking at here is the, the point of the juice fast. You know, it's encouraging people to go towards plant-based diet only, plant source only diet. The three of them, very, very powerful team and really making a large impression 
on the planet right now. So it was very, very beautiful. It seems very important for all of us, both men and women, to also hear a feminine voice coming through. And I think that provided a really beautiful balance. Both Michael and Gabriel are very well-balanced beings as well, and they can present both sides of it, and it's really beautiful to see um, strong women being able to participate and also offer such depth to everyone um, watching. So definitely three people to keep up with. We definitely support, you know, this this idea, and we're sharing this ourselves. You know, be veg, be veg, go green, go green, and save the planet. And save the planet. I'm going to tell everybody about her and I'm going to go right home and I'm going to tag her on her website and check it out. She has a darling sense of humor. Her message is totally kind and loving. Um, I loved her sense of humor and um, I absolutely adore her. I think she's great. She was so inspiring to me too because we're all kind of doing the same thing, but she's like connected in with the satellites and the international and she's talking to governments and rocking it. I just loved her. She's absolutely adorable. I've written nine books. My most recent books that deal specifically with raw living foods is um, Life Food Recipe Book, Living on Life Force. And that's just kind of a, a, a handbook for how to follow this program. And then a, a very scholarly work, which I published in 2005. And it's called Secrets of an Alkaline Body, The New Science of Colloidal Biology. They're all on Amazon.com. If you really want to know the science behind how this works, how it really turns around these diseases. One of the easiest things that anybody can do, you know, personally, is just to be eating a plant-based diet. Um, it's easy on the planet. It's easy on your body. You'll live a long time. Um, one of the big problems, besides just the absolute inhumane cruelty that goes on in factory farming animals, the runoff from those places is just polluting all of our groundwater, our precious, clean, underwater ground tables and this deforestation uh, and, and not just on the land but also in the oceans you know these dead zones which she mentioned today these are very very important this this can be healed now we're at a critical threshold we can heal it now it's going to take a little while but um, it's going to take about half the planet to shift onto a plant-based diet and that is totally doable especially when they get the information behind it you know and if more television you know, broadcasts are aimed at this. and I see in the next 100 years, we're really, really changing the way that we advertise, the way that we think about things. It's a really wonderful time to be alive on the planet right now, and I think this is the, one of the coolest lifetimes to be here because we are going to see this change in our lifetimes. Well, I really love the raw food movement because it, it goes a step beyond um, vegetarian and veganism, which is very important, and it goes right to the source of that life inside of us. They have these really cool cameras. You can take a picture of a person or an orange or a tree or any living thing. And you can see this amazing technicolor rainbow of light that's surrounding it. This is the sense of life food nutrition, right? That's why I call it life food. It's anything that has that aura, that rainbow around it, which peop any living thing does. Now you take a picture of an orange and it's got this enormous energy field of color and energy around it. But if you take a picture of something that's dead, like an animal product, there's nothing there. It's like a red, you know, nothing. And in fact, it even is red, too. If you look at the subatomic level underneath some of these microscopes and you look at what disease looks like, it's like that. It's neutral. There's nothing moving there. Anything that has a life force around it has enough energy. It has energy in it that's going to gift you energy. Whenever we cook that apple, all of the enzymes in it die, and so the life force in it dies, too. You take a picture of a dead apple next to a live apple, and you can just see what you're missing. Another important distinction is organics, right? If we got the whole planet to shift to organics, we would just be doing so well. So organic food has between 50 and 70 percent more nutrient, more vitamins, and especially minerals than non-organic food. Why we're we having so much disease on the planet today is because we're missing minerals. Not only are they cooking it out of the food, but it's very poor farming practices. So you have this range when you work with nature. Uh, rather than working against nature. And of course, if you know what non-organic means, it's kind of a nice word, but it really means we're putting a ton of pesticide and poison. We want to kill everything but the crop. We want to kill the birds and the bees, and the bees are having such a hit right now, too. The bees disappear, and we're all out of here. They handle all of the modern-day crops that we're working with right now. So we've got to stop poisoning our bodies, got to stop poisoning the planet, and really flood the body and flood the planet with nutrient. And this is how we're going to come through this piece.
Hello, I'm Hannah, and I am so excited to be here today and to see Master on TV. And I actually recently went to a lock restaurant, and that's where I was introduced to her. And um, and I also read your book, and it was just so beautiful and inspiring. And so everything is just so amazing how every synchronicity is all coming together, being here today, and yeah. and uh, just so excited. So. Um, Thank you so much for all the things that you're doing in the world and the information that's going out to millions and trillions in the entire planet. So we we will all make a difference and we will survive many, 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 many years and lifetimes and the children will be able to be happy and free and peaceful in the peaceful planet. Oh, she was fabulous. I, I was surprised and how sweet and kind and, and funny she was. It just it felt like she was in our living room. It was a really amazing experience uh, hanging out with her for a few minutes. I first signed up for this fest because um, I would like to learn from Dr. Gabriel how to heal my cousin from cancer. She's in Brazil now. And I had no idea what I was signing up for. I had the most ex wonderful experience of my life. I had insights that I never thought I would in, in six days. Today, we are on day six. And I feel lighter than I have ever felt. I feel, I feel clearer than I have ever felt. And most people on earth, they ask the question, why are we here for? What are we doing here? And through this process, you're in touch with that. You find out who you truly are, what you're here to do, and just be bad, go green. It's what keeps resonating in my ears and in my soul. And coming from Brazil, the largest uh, producer of meat and growing up seeing animals being killed, now I understand the importance of all of us around the world, forget about meat products and start planting in your gardens and it's going to help communities, it's going to help the planet, it's going to help yourself. If you want to, not to do this for a global standpoint, for your humanitarian standpoint, do it for yourself. You feel so amazing. You receive so much light through this process. I just recommend to everyone and I'm going to bring it to my clients, to my hotels, and, and hopefully we're just going to make an impact around the world. Just vegan, veg, going green. I am a conscientious eater. Like, I don't eat red meat, but I had a little chicken and lots of fish. I love fish. After this week, I am going vegan. I've decided I have made a commitment to myself, to my family, and to the planet. We say in Portuguese, uma andorinha não pode fazer o verão, which is one bird doesn't make the spring, but it takes one to start. Let's, let's do it. After this week, I have decided I'm going to continue my studies with um, uh, Dr. Gabriel um, uh, to become a raw vegan chef, and I'll bring the teachings home to Brazil. You know, in the next two weeks, we already started a chain uh, with my family. Uh, for 40 days, we are going to, to do a spiritual fast, you know, starting with seven days of food fast, just juice fast, and moving on and just to, to really connect with spirit. And during these 40 days, we are bringing this element now, which just, you know, I just found out that this is for the planet, not only for yourself, for your, for your body. It's going to be amazing from now on because... Brazil is going to wake up. That's my mission. I realize it's a huge problem. By producing all this meat that is polluting all this ocean, breaking uh, down forests to plant um, food for, for animals. So, Brazilians, join me. Let's make a difference in the world. Let's stop eating meat. Let's save our oceans. Let's leave the animals where they are. Let's go green. 
Supreme Master Ching Hai, thank you so much for your teachings, for your work, for everything you shared with us today. As a Brazilian citizen, I am here, now I know, to join you, Reverend Michael and Gabriel Cousins, on this journey to cool our planet through this movement. I have committed my higher self and my physical body in to work on this movement. So God bless you, God give you strength and just a wish there were more people like you in the world. So you are my teacher now and I will learn from you. I learned tremendously from you today and I was shocked with the facts. You have um, a follower here. Be veg, go green, save the planet. Greetings in the name of the Most High. What I'm doing here on this planet is I am transmuting and shape-shifting the entertainment industry through the cartoon world, through the movies, through music. I have abandoned types in the people. Most people know me because of my voice. I'm the voice of Cartoon Network. I do all the promos like, coming up next is Pokemon. But also, bigger than that, Beast Boy on Teen Titans. I, I'm the voice of Beast Boy, which he talks like this, and he's the first ever vegan, vegetarian superhero. Kids love him, and they learn from him, and they become vegetarians and vegans themselves. Because Beast Boy speaks of, hey, I've been those animals before. I am those animals. I don't want to eat myself. So it's a very ninja way of, of communicating this message of becoming a vegan vegetarian, which ultimately will happen little by little uh, within everybody because that's how we're going to survive. I've been a vegetarian since I was 12 years old. Um, a vegan now seven years. Um, a raw foodist four years now. So it's an evolution of basically being attracted to the things that make me feel good. So the cleaner your diet, the better you feel. The higher your vibrational frequency is, the more you can instantaneously manifest everything you want. And that's what I tell kids as I travel around the world. I'm going to New Zealand next week and I'm playing shows with my band Sipes and the People, which is um, a band that also carries the message of becoming aware that you're everywhere and everything, including the animals, and you wouldn't want to kill yourself because ultimately it hurts. In New Zealand, um, Australia, Germany, I'm going to these three places and playing music, and I'm doing uh, interviews and signing autographs for the cartoons, and I get to communicate this message to the kids. It's mostly about getting to the youth because they already know. If you tell a kid, hey, this is what's going on with animals, this is the repercussions of what happens, and when you put this in your body, they're like, oh, I got it. I'm a vegetarian, and they tell all of their friends. So it's, it's a very amazing, quick process with kids. The diet has everything to do with it, because we are what we eat, and it's that precise. Not only are we what we eat, we're, we are who we hang out with, the music we listen to, the movies we watch, the TV shows, the clothes you wear. Association is everything. That's why the entertainment business is so important. What we hear and see is how our minds work, which then therefore creates our reality. God's everywhere and everything. And, and as a family, as a global unit of conscious individuals, we together, our power is magnified a billion times as we come together. And now is the time we're coming together. So enjoy the ride. I'm in it with you. Thank you, Master. You bring such wisdom, such joy, um, inspiration to me that I know I can go out and help have it happen even more. And uh, we just thank you so much. Um, be vegan. Save the world. <laughs>
This concludes our presentation of Juice Fast for Peace on Words of Wisdom. And now, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Golden Age Technology, coming up next right after Noteworthy News. May God bless our planet with peace, friendship, and harmony. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash W-O-W